Four months ago, this container arrived in the mail. And if you're wondering what it is, it's a tiny sack. And inside lives up to 400 eggs. Confused? Well, allow me to explain that when I was younger, I would sometimes see branches on trees that started moving. And then I realized they weren't branches, but living and breathing insects called praying mantis. They had long bodies and bent legs that mimicked a stick, a leaf, a flower, or a tree branch. And so, now, you can probably guess that this egg sac is a praying mantis egg sac that actually holds between 50 and 400 eggs. And 16 weeks ago, I decided that I would try to hatch this egg sac so I could learn more about the life cycle of praying mantis insects. And then, my plan was that once they hatched, I would release them in the garden so they could become my garden predator. These insects are amazing because they eat the bad bugs in your garden, like aphids, grasshoppers, flies, and even mosquitoes. And they're the best because they don't bite people, damage plants, or spread disease. One egg sac can cover an area of up to 1,000 square feet and get rid of all of the bad bugs in your garden. But since there are so many eggs inside, I had to make sure that there was enough food for all of them because they're actually cannibalistic, meaning if they don't have enough food, they will sacrifice their brothers and sisters and, well, eat each other. So I decided that when they hatched, I would feed them flightless fruit fly culture. That's right, flies that don't fly. Mostly because I didn't want to deal with flies all around my house, but also because that's a real thing where fruit flies are bred to not be able to fly. Weird, I know. But anywho, at the beginning of this experiment, I knew it would take at least four to eight weeks for them to hatch. And when they did hatch, it would only take around one to two hours for hundreds of baby mantis insects to emerge and disperse. So we were gonna have to act quickly, feed them, keep them for a while, and then release them. Great plan, right? Wrong, because I waited, and I waited a while. But let me first just mention that I did want to keep one of them when they hatched as my pet because they actually make really great house pets. They have a lifespan of about six months to one year from egg to adult to natural death. And even though they're short lived, I thought that watching them grow, molt, hunt and transform was going to be super rewarding and educational too. It's even said that when a praying mantis appears at your doorway, it's a symbol of good luck and protection in various folklore and some cultural beliefs. So it's safe to say that I was really ready to relive my childhood and get to hold these living, breathing tree branch insects in my own hands. I was so ready to witness the life cycle of a praying mantis, and I thought it was gonna happen sooner rather than later. But remember when I said that I waited for a while? Well, yeah, the first week turned into the second, and then the third, and then a whole 16 weeks passed, and they were supposed to hatch in just eight, but I figured maybe nature is just making me wait. But week after week, I began to get nervous, and then I realized that we had a problem. I tried poking the egg sac and it didn't move at all and I figured that if they were living and breathing tiny eggs that were gonna hatch inside they would move at least a little but this egg sac was really brittle so I honestly just wasn't sure what to do wait open it live die and that's when a light bulb came on in my head after doing some research on egg sacs and watching countless videos about other people's experience, I learned that the egg sac should be a bit white on the top if it is viable for hatching. And naturally, since it wasn't, of course, I was disappointed, still not knowing what we would find inside. So it's safe to say my plan changed a bit. And as nervous as I was, I decided I would wait four more weeks. And when those four more weeks passed and nothing, the time came when my my plan was set and I was all in. I was gonna open this thing up and carefully dissect it to see if there were any babies inside that we could save. So finally, the time came where I took the egg sac into my hands and carefully started to dissect it and cut it open. The very first thing I noticed was the smell. It smelled raunchy, like really bad, death bad. And then I started to get kind of sad because that kind of hinted that the situation wasn't, should I say, lively. 
But upon a closer look, I started to notice layers upon layers of tiny little maggot-like bugs. And then I thought, well, wait, maybe these things are alive and they just need a little bit more time. But I wasn't seeing any movement from them. And this was the first time I had ever tried hatching mantis eggs. So I wasn't sure if they were supposed to move or not, but they were so tiny. So I got my microscope out and decided to look at the tiny fellas up close and personal under the microscope to see what was really going on. Were they alive? Were they dead? Did they just need more time? This is what they looked like under the microscope. Still no movement, but you could see the tiny babies and they were forming possibly even ready to hatch. Then I got my macro lens out and evaluated one up close and personal. And then I took the egg sac and evaluated that. And at the end, I still wasn't sure. They could be okay, but the smell mixed with no movement kind of pointed towards them not being alive. So let me know what you think, but I'm gonna keep them in the bug box and keep them in the right environmental conditions to see if something special might take place in the coming days. So wish me luck.